Today's project video is made possible with support from Wondrium. I'm gonna let you know more about them later, but if you wanna learn more now, you can go to wondrium.com slash tested and start your free trial today. Hey everyone, Norm from Tested here, and I got another 3D printing project as well as an artist showcase for you today. But let's start with the project. And this is kind of a continuation of a line of experimentation and process experimentation that, that I've been trying over the past month or so. Uh, last time I did a video, I showed a process where I went into a mesh mixer and experimented with taking a model of a character or a portrait and using the plane cut tool to slice that portrait in half. And that gave me the ability to print that character using two different materials, maybe a translucent on one side and a solid opaque on the other side that I could do some painting with to create almost like that uh, an anatomical model look, almost like a, a Jason Freeney classic artwork of half clear and half solid. And I saw on Reddit, on the resin printing subreddit, there was a, a Reddit user who did the exact same thing and took it an extra step and it really blew my mind. So today's project is kind of a tribute and an attempt to replicate that process uh, the way I would do it and hopefully to show you a way that you can do it at home with your own 3D printers. This Reddit user, which I'll link their post in the description below, basically took a full anatomical sculpture. In this case, it was like a classical Greek sculpture and again, cut it in half, did some better plane cuts than I did, but on one side made it solid like marble and the other side didn't just make it clear and translucent, but made it look like there was an embedded skeleton, a golden skeleton embedded on the clear side. And it looks like there are two solid objects fused together, like they had a skeleton model and a negative and, and, a, and put it in there and then poured resin to, to fuse two models together. But that wasn't actually the case. And the brilliant thing they did was actually create the negative cavity of the skeleton. They took this, the side that was supposed to be opti optically clear, supposed to be the side you can see through, and then also carved out digitally a skeleton in there and then painted that skeleton carefully to make it look like a solid piece, almost like a intrinsic painting and painting the negative. And that idea really, really blew my mind. And I figured it was something you could do with the tools available to people out there, free tools like Mesh Mixer. And so I did that and attempted that with my own modeled head. Uh, this is a model by Michael Herm, the guy behind Teco Toys. And I blew this head up, uh, did a plane cut, down the center and then found a skull model right off of Thingiverse. Uh, in this case, this is one that has the top half and the bottom half of the skull, the jaw as two separate pieces, and I could easily uh, use Mesh Mixer, another tr the transform tool to scale and orient that skull to match my head. Now it's not gonna be a perfect match and I don't think it actually needs to be. It just needs to aesthetically look like they're a part of the same entity. And I was able to do two things. I was able to one, create a positive. And so here is an example and printed relatively large of my printed in clear translucent resin again, head solid on one half. And then on the other half, you see looks like an embedded skull. Now there's not a full skull embedded in here. Using the uh, the Boolean operation of combining models in Mesh Mixer, all it did was 
take basically one half of the skull and combine it with this solid piece on this other side. And so if you see on the other on the solid side, you don't see an actual skull floating in there, but you do see the half of the skull floating out. And that looks pretty cool already on its own. I mean, I was already pretty happy with the ability of very simply combining two models. And then I perform the Boolean difference operation. And this is using one model as basically carving out of another model as the negative. And again, did it on the other side of my head. And here, where I have a solid head, on the inside, you can kind of see there's a cavity in here. And that cavity was the skull model. The same skull model that was a positive on the other side is now a negative on this side. It doesn't really look like anything from the inside, does it, right? It just looks like there's negative space. But because it's translucent resin, if you look at the exterior, you can kind of see that there's a skull in there. And again, the alignment isn't perfect, like the teeth and the lips don't perfectly match up because this is a hand sculpted model of my head. But as long as like the eye cavity and the, the height basically matches up, it has a pretty compelling look already. And I was happy with both this positive and this negative as an experimentation, but can't stop there. And what that Reddit user did was of course paint the inside of the skull. And they described it in their post as using some liquid paint and then actually injecting it to fill in all those nooks and crannies. And in my case, what I had is rub and buff. So we've used this plenty. I used it in the last video. Uh, this is like a, a wax. It um, comes out almost like a putty. And this half ounce, is that right? Half ounce tube goes a long way. A little bit of this putty spreads far and wide and you can apply it um, with you know uh, rubber gloves and using your fingertip to put it on surfaces to give things some highlights like a dry brush uh, or you can use an actual brush to uh, apply this on. It has a quality where it tends to get everywhere where a little bit of this if you touch a surface if you graze the surface it's gonna make that this gold leaf color or pewter color or what uh, what have you. And in this case that's both a good thing and also a scary thing because I want to paint that interior of the skull or maybe that exterior of that skull with the rub and buff and not get it onto the other translucent surfaces uh, but I also want to fill all the cavities. Um, and so very carefully going through and using a brush as well as using my fingertip in a rubber glove, I was able to paint on the smaller print, just so I wouldn't use too much material. This is the positive with my head and a, now a golden skull and already looking pretty good. Again, there's no skull on the inside of the head, so it just looks like a marble almost. I did hit it with some Krylon clear coat to make it more optically transparent. But you can see, looks pretty good. And you can actually buff out uh, the rub and buff once you've applied it. So let it dry a little bit and then really rub it in to the surface and it looks almost like a solid gold piece. For the negative, did the same thing. Uh, used a paintbrush very carefully and got into the nooks and crannies. So you can see here is the painting on the inside. You can tell it's a pretty messy paint application and not even you know fully complete. There are definitely some spots where it's denser than others. But on the flip side, on the head side, and this is a, actually a failed print of my head, so there's no bottom jaw here, you can see that it looks like there's a skull there on the inside. And the effect is just, it's mesmerizing. I love, love, love this effect. But not stopping there because I wanna make sure it's something that you out there can try um, even if you don't have a 3D model of yourself. Uh, and so I embarked to try this on like a, an art statue, a, a scan of a classical statue of which there are many you can find on places like Thingiverse. And I ended up choosing the, the Venus de Milo 
iconic statue. Um, and the first thing I did was just make sure I was only using the head and shoulders part because I didn't want to, I don't have a full skeleton model. I didn't want to do that in bed there. I just want to work on the head and a skull. Uh, and then perform the same digital operations in Mesh Mixer. I did a plane cut down the center here at an angle, because that's how it's oriented, right to the nose, making sure the nose and the lips are perfectly split in half there. Again, again, using the transform tools to split the models apart, uh, and then use that same skull, lined it up, made sure the eye socket matched an eye line and the teeth matched the jaw line there, uh, and performed the same negative uh, Boolean difference operation, carving out on one side. Now I'm gonna show you the, uh, the opaque side first uh, because I just wanted also to experiment with finishes. Uh, here is the solid side painted to look like marble. And it was actually printed on the same uh, translucent resin. This is Soraya Tech Clear uh, Simple and really easy resin to work with. I love this stuff. It's not viscous, it flows really well. I use the same print settings as I do on opaque resins. Uh, don't over cure this stuff or it will tint a little yellow, uh, and you can tint it different colors, but this is painted with uh, gray primer and then some white, and then with a little bit of rub and buff, white rub and buff on the highlights to give it a little bit of a grainy texture. Um, but very clearly, one half of the Venus de Milo. And then I did the same operation, but painted it here a uh, darker color. It was almost like a, a gunmetal color. And I think it looks pretty good, almost like an onyx is what it looks like here. It catches light really well. You can still see the sculptural details in this model. So I got two options, got white, and I got like the onyx, and I think I'm gonna end up using white, but let me know which one do you think works better? And we're gonna try now also two different finishes on the clear side. Now, the first one I have is a standard gold. And once again, carved out the inside digitally, painted it with the rub and buff. And in this case, I did include the jawline. And you can see the small hole here. That was really tough to paint the rub and buff to get in there to get that jawline. I'd actually use some makeup tools dipped in rub and buff, smeared rub and buff and fill out that cavity. Ended up picking up some um, gold leaf paint. So this is liquid brush, what is this? Uh, brush and leaf, basically the same as the rub and buff. And then I uh, was able to push that into the cavity, but you can see that's what it looks like. And that I think looks really, really cool. Again, I hit the exterior of this uh, Soraya Tech Clear Simple with some Krylon Crystal Clear, which helps make it more optically clear and glossy. And when we pair this with, let's say the marble side, let's see if we get this alignment just right. I'm not gonna glue these together just yet. Here you go. This is that look of being white on one side and gold on the other side. Let's try with the onyx. And here's what it looks like. Onyx, black on one side and gold on the other side. I think it's pretty striking. Um, I also tried a second interior color. I had one of my favorites, the ruby, almost a copper-like rub and buff. And so here is the skull in copper. Now I don't have this color in liquid form. And so I was unable to get into the jawline here with that fine uh, makeup applicator. So I had to pour some gold in to fill up that negative space. And so you see a hybrid of the copper ruby look and the gold look. I, I really, really like this finish here. I think I like it better than the gold leaf. It's unfortunate because I don't have this in 
the liquid color. And let's see what this looks like, again, with paired with a white marble look. And what it looks like when it's paired with the onyx black look. So let me know which combination of colors you find more striking and effective. Is it on the solid side, the white marble or the black onyx? And then for the translucent side, is it a gold finish, a gold skull, or do you like the ruby copper-esque skull? Let me know in the comments. Hey, so while we're waiting for the next 3D print to finish up for this project, I wanna let you know about the sponsor that made this video possible, and that's Wondrium. Wondrium is a fantastic repository of long form and short form videos that are both instructional and entertaining on a wide variety of topics. They have tutorial how-tos, they have travel logs, they have full-length documentaries across all sorts of interesting topics, whether you want to learn how to do photography or woodworking or learn about a different place in the world or a different time, like the kind of classical sculpture we're doing in this video today. Uh, recently, I watched the documentary Film Worker on Wondrium. It's about Stanley Kubrick's longtime collaborator and assistant, Leon Vitali, and it, it blew my mind watching this, realizing connecting the dots that this is actually also the actor that played Lord Bullingdon in one of my favorite Kubrick films, Barry Lyndon. It's like that kind of really interesting deep dives into all sorts of topics that you can find. You can start a free trial today at the link below. It's wondrium.com slash tested. Go check them out and thanks for watching and supporting us as well. Now back to the print. And of course, I couldn't stop there because this is all digital fabrication. Uh, I have the files now that I've made, and so because I could print this in this size, which I think it's pretty nice, I also beefed it up and printed it much bigger in this side. And I chose the white marble finish for my larger one, and I've yet to paint this, so let's take out the rub and buff and paint the interior of this Venus.
Before we wrap up, I wanna give a shout out to this month's featured artist, and it's Cobra Mode. You can check them out on Patreon or my mini factory. And this is a creator designing tabletop miniatures at 32 millimeter scale. And with monthly releases on Patreon, I have generated some really beautiful and striking characters. For example, this is a tiny, like, shark creature. Uh, every month seems to be themed on a riff on some wildlife. And so there's underwater creatures, there are flying creatures, insects, uh, but they all have a wonderful personality, holding little weapons with lovely, lovely proportions to make them just so cute. Uh, and the models are, of course, both uh, supported and unsupported if you want to align them yourself. Uh, my most favorite one recently was part of their May release is this eel, and we did a paint job with Kate Savaker, and uh, you'll just see in a future video, but we painted this eel character, which has, again, just wonderful personality, amazing amount of detail, uh, and works both uh, well at small scale as well as blown up to about this size. Um, so Cobra Mode is the name of the artists on both Patreon and my mini factory. Check them out, support them, download their files, and show me what you've been printing lately. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with another 3D printing project next month. I'm Norm, and I'll see you next time. Bye.